So from time to time, I'll get people that'll ask me questions like, Neil, if I were to build a home gym, what kind of equipment would I get? My answer is always a qualified, don't build a home gym. Just go to a gym, an actual gym where there are actual people and actual trainers and jump into the actual program and do stuff that will actually get you fit. But in the absence of something like that, I thought I would take some time and show you that if I were going to build my own home gym and I was maybe pinned down by COVID and that'd be about the only reason you could get me to do it, I would show you what I would have in my gym. So let's go over some of that. First things first, you're gonna want some weights and you don't have to get super fancy with your weights. I went down to Rogue about 10 years ago and I picked up these weights from Rogue Fitness now, you should know the story behind this. Before I bought these kind of ugly things that I think are sort of made out of tires, um, I bought some real fancy ones. And by about three months in, we had shredded them. We had pieces of weights all over this gym. I had to send them all back, and then I had to buy these. And you should know, these have been here for all 10 years. We just turned 10 years old just this month, and we have beaten the loving hell out of these plates. Now, back in the olden days, Rogue didn't guarantee how much these weighed. And you should know I can take these and I can set them on the weights, the scales. And you'll see sometimes, maybe not here, but the people will write the weight on them. So that, because people get crazy. This one's three pounds heavier than this other one. Fine, that was an issue 10 years ago. It's not anymore. I know Rogue guarantees their weights. But if I were you, I'd make sure I got these and I wouldn't get anything fancier because you don't need it. These things probably have literally millions of drops. I'm not saying a million, I'll bet they have millions of drops on them and they're all fine. Now, if I were you, here's how much I would get. I would go get these rogue plates and then I would get four of them. You'd think you only need maybe two of them, but you'll grow out of that pretty quick. And by the time you've grown out of that, you'll want them pretty bad. So I suggest you get about four 45s, two 25s, two 10s, some fives, and some two and a halves. And each of them should have a GPP on them. And if they don't have one, call me. We'll make sure you get the stencil and you can put it on yourself because that's super important to your fitness, I guarantee. Here's the deal. Don't get those stupid 35s. I've never had the 35s in my gyms and you don't need them. I don't know why they make them. I think it's silly. All you need is 45s, 25s, 10s, 5s, and 2 and a halves. Now, you're gonna need some bars. I suggest if you're gonna get some bars, you go back over to Rogue and you get yourself their Rogue bars. They have these by different names, right? This was the original Rogue bar. This was a gift to me from Bill Hanniger himself and his name is Henry. I suggest you go pick up a Rogue Bar because these things have lasted 10 years, especially Henry. Henry is our most favorite bar. You're not even allowed in my gym to touch Henry until you can do X amount of weight, right? It's different for everybody. But I prefer you don't even look over at Henry until you've earned your right to pick up Henry. Here's the other thing to know. Those Rogue Bars, they're amazing. I've got 27 of them, okay? There's a few of them that are out over there on the racks, right? The thing that you need to know is I've had these things for over 10 years. We run 10 classes a day. In general, we have about 20 to 25 people per class and I've never bent one, not a single bar. I've never done anything but take them apart, I've re-greased them and put them back together. And I've only done that once. So these things are bulletproof. If you get them, I suggest you get a bunch of seven footers, right? This uh, rope bar is, I think it's an inch and a quarter. And then the females like this five footer. It's about 25, 30 pounds. But what they like the most about it is that grip. It's only an inch big. And so they can get their hands around it a little better. And you'd think these wouldn't last as long. You'd be dead wrong about that. Every single one of my junior bars have lasted just as well as my big rogue bars. So don't worry about that. Plus I think, I don't know, when I got my rogues, they had a lifetime guarantee, which they didn't need. Lastly, I've spent a lot of money 
on stupid bar ends. I've spent a lot of money on stupid bar ends and invariably I've always broken them, always. The only ones I've never broken are these stupid little clips. I highly suggest you go get these little clips and use them because they will last you a lifetime, millions of drops. I bought the, the stupid, what were those? Those Velcro ones, the Velcro wears out. I bought the ones that you twist on, they break after a little while. I bought the ones you clip on, they always come off. The only ones I've ever been able to rely on are these guys and you're gonna need some, so get these and I think they're probably the cheapest anyway. Now you're gonna need some kettlebells. You're gonna need four kettlebells if you're working out on your own or maybe just you and a buddy. You're gonna need four different sizes. Get yourself a 54, a 25, or sorry, a 35, a 25, and a 15, okay? Once again, 54, 35, 25, and 15. I don't know why people buy those 44s. It makes me laugh. You don't need them, right? About the time you outgrow that 35, that 54 will be just right. And I suggest you get these adders, okay? Says adder right on them. They got something on them that uh, it's like a clear coat, but that clear coat patinas in a way that makes them beautiful. As you all know, as everybody knows, there is nothing more beautiful than cold looking steel. And so we love our adders. And here's why you don't buy the caps or the, why you don't buy painted kettlebells. They chip. And it's not long before these things right here start snagging. And I think that scarred up and callous hands are beautiful. Beautiful as cold steel, but these kind of wreck your hands. So if I were you, I wouldn't buy them. Plus, I've seen these things chip and fall off in people's eyes. I wouldn't do that. Lastly, you're gonna need some dumbbells. I suggest you get these dumbbells that are wrapped in neoprene at the ends, right? They're padded, they won't mess up your floor, they won't mess up as much stuff when they hit them. And they are gonna hit stuff because you're gonna get tired and drop stuff. That's part of fitness, right? When you get them, I wouldn't get those stupid fitted handles. This is my only regret in life. Right? My biggest regret that I've ever had was buying those stupid fitted handles. I've always wished they had barbell-like handles, but they don't. And we've made do with them for a solid decade. I wish they would all break so I could rebuy them, but I can't. And I won't, and they won't break, which does attest to their quality to some degree. So from that standpoint, I can get on board with it. You will need some 10s. You'll need some 12s, 12 and a half, 15s, and 20s. And I wouldn't go much higher than that for just general conditioning. If you're just doing GPP, 20s will do you. You'll see, they'll do you. And if they won't do you, you've got a kettlebell um, that'll make up for whatever you need in terms of a higher weight. Lastly, once you get all your weights, you're gonna need a rig. And I know that's a big pill to swallow, but you need it. You have to have it. You're not gonna be able to do the stuff that you need to get in shape without a rig. So I wanna show you some of the features that you'll be looking for in a rig. I went down to Utah Home Fitness and I bought this Inspire rig. You can kinda of see it's badging all over the place. And I freaking love it. You're gonna want something that's at least two by two. This one's three by three, some really thick gauge steel. And I want you to always be looking at the bottoms of it. There should be tons of supports on both sides. If you find a rig that's only got supports on one side and they're not very tall, you're gonna wreck it, okay? These things are meant to have weights thrown at them. Raw, freaking heavy weighted steel thrown at it. And if you don't buy something that'll stand up to it, you won't use it, it'll break, it'll turn into this kind of fiasco of a thing that just sits in your garage and you hang shit from. And that's not the purpose of a rig. I'm gonna encourage you to go out on a limb a little bit and get yourself a decent rig, something that'll work. And it ought to have attachments on it. Let me show you what some of those attachments ought to look like. You do well to get yourself a, uh, a dip bar, a dip station. You can do dips up on top of this and you can do pull-ups from underneath it. You'll want it and it's pretty handy because you can put it in a lot of different places, right? And that guy is solid as a rock. It's also pretty good if you need it as a spotter in certain ways, okay? My rig has of course got the J-cups on it, right? And these are heavy duty J-cups. And I like them because they're padded. I think I prefer to hear steel smack on steel. And so at first I was offended when I started feeling the padding 
on these things and started hearing that it wasn't smacking and then I got over it and I've started to enjoy it and I like it. But you can even buy other Jacobs other places. I've seen Jacobs at Walmart. They won't fit this rig, but they'll probably fit your two by two rig for sure. Okay, I like that. Spotters, right? I don't know what that thing's called, but that thing's adjustable and I love it. Oh, you hear that? Doesn't that make your heart flutter? You wanna go pick something up heavy and get more fit right now, don't you? Yes, I know you do. That's why we buy this thing. You want that. Look, you gotta set this guy up so that when you're bench pressing, what? I should bench press? Hell yeah, you should bench press. You should be able to drop that thing, and when you do drop it, you pull it off the rack and put it down. You should be able to drop it on your chest and crush it, but this'll keep it off your neck and it'll keep you alive until the maid comes home to clean your house and then sees you struggling under it for air, and you'll stay alive until that moment. Those will be good times, and you'll want that to happen, right? The best part is I can take these and I can put them on the outside, and I can do superset stuff with them because I can spot myself here with this adjustable unit too, right? That can be turned, become also a spotter, okay? And I can put this guy out there. This guy's multi-useful. I also love these elastics, right? We've been playing with these a lot lately, and it's got hookups for this, both top and bottom, that'll help me with my pull-ups, right? This one's cool because it's got this really cool landmine attachment. And I use that landmine attachment mainly, I'll take Henry, whom I love, and I will push him down in there, I'll stand over the top of him, and I'll do rows with Henry. I love that landmine. A lot of people do that weird ass stuff with it, and I don't know. Maybe you can find some use for it. I would laugh at you if I caught you doing that, but you know, maybe you know something I don't know. I respect that. Not. Nah. Um, also, this thing's got one of those hookups for it so that if some misguided fool taught you to go buy one of those expensive, big, thick ropes and wave it around all weird like, you could put it right there if you wanted to. You could also do useful stuff with it too. Like you could take elastics and move around with it. But uh, it's got one of those. It's got a lot of stuff. One of the things I like the most are the multi-grip pull-up attachment, right? I'm old now. I get a lot of pain doing a lot of stupid stuff that most people wouldn't. And if I take an overhand grip on a straight bar, I'm gonna get elbow pain for the rest of my damn life. Can't do it, okay? I also can't do it with my arm perfectly straight like this. I don't know why. So instead what I can do is I can take these guys and I can do those almost pain free. I can't do them overhand, which I could do if I wanted to turn around, right? I can't do them overhand, but if I do it just on an angle, I can find a comfortable grip just for me. Um, yes, I know the sticker shock on this thing is atrocious, but if I were you, I'd go get one. I would. It's terrible too. You'd think that these things shouldn't cost that much, but a well-engineered, well-crafted outfit ought to cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 1,500 bucks. Believe it or not, I paid for all of these attachments, this unit right here, I think I paid 1,500 bucks, 1,600 bucks. I bought two benches, multi-adjustable benches, which by the way, you will also need Right? I think this is a 1,000 pound capacity bench. It's got several attachments here. I bought two of these and this for 1,800 bucks. You can find some damn good deals out there. You just have to kind of look for them a little bit. Lastly, you're gonna need some cardio, right? Everybody's like, well, don't I need a rope to jump? Hell no. You're not gonna be able to wave your, wave your rope around inside of your garage. Nobody's got a garage that tall. Maybe you do. Um, don't forget, you can do a simulated jump rope right there all day long. So if you got weights, you got a jump rope. And I like those better in terms of fitness anyway. Now, the very end of the day, you ought to consider going out and grabbing you a Concept 2. I don't know all the other brands out there. I really don't. But here's what I want to tell you. I bought 10 of these, okay? And in the last 10 years, I have broken one. And it wasn't, didn't break because something up here in the unit broke. I got this strong son of a bitch named Tyson that jumped on this thing, and he decided to give that a pull as hard as he could, and he literally broke that pedal off, right? I've done the math on these guys. 
um, you can go in, you can look how many miles they have on the new ones. These are the old ones, they are 10 years old. I haven't had a maintenance issue with one of them. I've never even replaced the straps because I didn't have to. I'm telling you, if you want a solid bulletproof unit, proof unit, these guys have millions, not thousands, millions of kilometers on them, millions. And they work better than any car I've ever had. So all those moving parts and they're in pretty good shape. They're not bad. I think they're, I think I paid eight fifty a piece for these. They're, they'll be a little higher than that now. Um, in fact, we'll put that, we'll, we'll go through and put you all the prices on this and add it up. And I know at the end of this, you're going to be seeing a little thing up here in the corner that says what the price is. It's flashing right now. And that's going to make your little heart go pitter pat. You'll be like, what the hell? I can't afford that much money. And I'm going to tell you something. Yes, you can. It's cheaper than your diabetes medication. I promise it is especially when you add up how much diabetes medication you're going to need. So my thought to you is forget that price. It doesn't matter. It's a great investment in yourself. It will be the finest investment you ever made in your life for both you and your family. Yes, I hate this part. I always forget this part. Listen, if any part of this video helped you out and I've earned it, would you mind just going down below, hitting that like button and if you would like to see more of these videos in the future, I'd appreciate it to subscribe. I'd love to share these with you. And I'd even more, I would love to see your comments and some of your thoughts on what equipment you would use in your gym down below.